I miss you guys so much. Again, I feel like I keep saying this. I am so sorry that I haven't been posting. But today's video, as you can probably already tell by the title, it's going to be a little story. So I studied abroad and basically where I stayed was in Florence, Italy. But while I was there, we kind of traveled to different places. And one of the places that we traveled was Santorini, Greece. We went to Santorini for um, our spring break. It was me and my roommate, Andriana. So we booked this trip all on our own. Um, a lot of students will go with a student travel company and they go, um, it's called Greece Island Hopping. So they'll go to a few different islands in Greece. We kind of wanted just to go right to Santorini and spend the whole week there. It was one of the places that I've always wanted to go. So I'm gonna basically start at the beginning and <laughs> just tell you all the struggles that we had throughout the trip, as well as what the title of this video is about. So we flew from Florence to Rome, and then we had, I think it was like an hour and a half or two hour layover in Rome, and then from Rome we flew to Athens. So I forget what time we left Florence, but I think it was probably at like 4.30 or something, so the flights were going to be overnight, just because it was cheaper that way. We got to Athens, I believe we had like a six hour layover or something like that. We got there at like 12 30 or 1 o'clock in the morning and then our flight wasn't until like 6 30 super super early so then from athens we had to fly to santorini so we finally get to santorini and we're exhausted and the villa that we booked was super cheap we wanted something that was cheap to be able to stay there for the whole week and not spend all of our money and also they had airport transportation back to the villa so we get off the plane in santorini and we're looking around we're trying to figure out who is our ride and then we find this big greek like older man and found out that he was our ride. So me and Andriana kind of looked at each other and we were like, oh my God, what are we getting ourselves into? He was like pretty nice. I mean, like he like took our suitcases for us and we were like walking with him to go get in the car and it is this like super sketchy van. So that was like strike number one that we were like, what the hell? And then number two is we drive from the airport to our villa and we pull in and he tells us that we can't check in until 12. And at this point, I'm pretty sure it was like 6.30 or something in the morning. And we had no idea what to do. He literally wouldn't let us in. There was no rooms. We couldn't check in. So we literally were like, okay, well, let's try to go find food or something. So we had to leave our suitcases locked in this random van in this sketchy little villa we had no idea where anything was so like dead too because it was so early in the morning so we decided that we were gonna go walk and try to find food we start walking and we're on like this never-ending long road with nothing around us and then we could kind of see the water from where we were so we're like okay like let's just go chill we'll go walk by the water like put our feet in the sand something just kind of get our minds occupied we're walking and walking, and walking, and walking. See a couple donkeys, see a couple horses. Like we are literally still going. Where, where the fuck are we going? Like we come across, I literally kid you not, an ostrich and we walk behind like this little like, like wall thing and we look up and there's dead ass an ostrich in someone's backyard. At this point we're like delusional and we walk back to our villa and it's like, 11 maybe so we walk in the room and it was the sketchiest place i've ever been in my entire life and we had to spend the whole week there and like i am not one to be like oh like i want a nice hotel or things like that but like it was just dirty shower like would leak there was no towels like it was very musty smelling and the way like our room was it was like you walk in and it's literally right there so it's like in the front of the building so it was super sketchy like we felt like anyone could like break into our room at any point through the front and finally we were like oh my god it took five minutes to get to the center of town we finally figured out where it was we had to go the opposite way and go like up and it was beautiful. We found the edge of the water where you can just see all these like beautiful little islands and stuff. I'll try to insert a picture here, but it was literally like the most beautiful place I have ever been to in my entire life. And I'm so thankful that I got to go. So anyways, into basically the main point of this video, it was, I believe like the second or third day that we were there and needed, um, 
uh, some food and uh, like shampoo and stuff like that. So we walked into this little like grocery store that they had there. And of course, everything's in Greek and at least in like some languages like Italian and like Spanish, you can kind of figure out what something is, but Greek is like, you're looking at just a bunch of symbols and stuff like that. Like we had no idea what we were looking at. We pick up a bottle and we couldn't tell if it was shampoo or conditioner and we only really needed shampoo. So most of the time places people speak English in Europe. So we went up to this guy and we're like, hey, like, do you speak English? And he was like, like little bit. So we're like, is this shampoo? And he was like, what? And we're like, shampoo. <laughs> and he was like, Shamp shampoo, shampoo. And we're like, oh, okay, like, thank you. So we check out and we leave the store. And basically the grocery store was like diagonal from where our villa was. So to get down to our villa, it's like a long, like driveway type thing. So we cross the street and we're walking down the driveway and we hear this car like speeding like this little like path isn't that long and it's really small and we hear this car like speeding up behind us and we're like basically walking back into the building and it was the guy and it was weird because it's like not like we were walking on the main road like we needed to go somewhere like clearly we were going to the villa and so he like rolls down the window and we like looked at him and he was like come come and Number one rule I feel like every child learns is like never get in a car with a stranger, especially not in a foreign country. No, like, thanks, thanks. And he's like, no, like, ride, come. We're literally back at this villa. And thankfully the owner of the villa, like the old guy that I was telling about who drove us earlier that we were kind of sketched out by, he was kind of like looking like, what the heck? And the car saw the other guy. He kind of was like, oh, and like, then turned around and spat. So the guy who owns the villa was like barely spoken any English. He's like basically telling us like, I'll be your security, which was weird that like he kind of got the vibe that something wasn't right and like that he had to like protect us. So anyways, like we were freaked out by that. It was just weird. And then the next day we were walking to the center of town and basically to get to the center, like I said, it's on this really, really long road. And then, so it's like probably five minutes down the road and then you go up into the center of town on one of the side streets. And randomly, like I just saw this like white car drive by us on the other side of the road. And I turned to Andrea and I was like, hey, like, I don't know why, like I'm just wicked sketched out now. Like every time I see a white car, like it makes me think of that guy. And next thing I know, a car because we were on the opposite side of the road so like we were walking with like the cars coming towards us it pulls up right next to us and i looked and it was the guy and i literally was like holy shit like so we started walking and we see him on the other side of the road and he's like driving by us like looking at us and anyone knows me like one of my number one fears is getting kidnapped like it just freaks me out so bad we run across the street into this restaurant wicked freaked out and we're like can we please just like stay here while we were in there he drove by probably like six times like driving like frantically looking on both sides of the road for us he sprinted literally sprinted to get to the center of town because like through there you can't really drive cars. So we finally got there and like we're kind of just like trying to relax. So we were looking at like the menus and stuff like trying to go to dinner and Andrea was like, Ellen, oh, like isn't that his car right there? Cause like it was like parked like on the side street kind of on like the edge of the, of the center. And I was like, no, I don't think so. Like I don't see any white cars, like it's, it's fine. So we're like, okay, like we're gonna go to the place that we went to um, the first day that we got there. We, the people there are wicked nice. Like we'll just go relax, like chill out. And I turned around and the guy was out of his car following us. I literally jumped over a wall like over a wall onto the stairs to go down to the restaurant. And she's like, no, wait, wait, like I'm gonna say something to him. And I'm like, what the hell do you mean you're gonna say something to him? I'm like, one, he doesn't speak English and two, this guy's following us. Like, what do you mean you're gonna say something? So I'm freaking out and like, she literally turned, I forgot what she even said. I, this was like, I was like blacked out at this point. And I think she was like, hey, and it was the creepiest thing I've ever seen. Like, I have never seen someone like flip on a dime so quick. He just, kept his head straight and just kept walking like nothing like acting like he wasn't around us wasn't following us but like clearly he was so we go down into the restaurant I lost it I started hysterically crying and I was like oh my god that like I don't know what to do because now we're stuck in this restaurant he probably knows where we live because he knew that we were coming from there 
and he saw us walking in there. This guy clearly wants something from us and I don't know what, like, I don't want to know what it is. Like, we're trying to tell the people who work in the restaurant what was going on. I obviously knew something was wrong because I'm like literally sobbing. The restaurant was full at this point too and everyone was like, I literally called my mom who's back here in the United States thinking that like, I did probably the worst idea that I could do, but like, she's just like my best friend. I was like, I need to like, talk to her so i'm telling her about what's going on she's like what the hell do you mean this greek guy is following you he so she's talking to people um that she works with who have family in greece and they were like no like people there are just really nice like things like that she's like i wouldn't worry about it but like if you feel real uncomfortable like tell the police guys who worked in the restaurant were like they literally don't do anything unless like someone's like stabbed my mom's like just relax like he's probably just like nice like they're just very friendly there things like that as she's like freaking out i'm sobbing we're on the opposite sides of the world and she's just trying to stay calm for my sake we took a taxi back to our place and i have never been so scared to sleep in my life like i was just freaked out on the way home literally me and Andrena were like ducked down in the back of the cab because we didn't want anyone to see us like we didn't want this guy if he was like following us to see us so it was the second to last day that we were leaving and we hadn't seen the guy since that incident. And at that point, I was just like really angry about it because I'm like, this guy is ruining our trip. I am in Greece right now and he's ruining my trip. Like this is so like unnecessary. We were like shopping around and we found this like Greek um, like pastry place sitting on the curb. I turned, the guy was literally sitting in his car, parked. And at that point, I was like, I'm pissed. Like, I am pissed. Like, Andrana one, get his license plate because he's sitting there. So she wrote down his license plate. And then we figured out how to say, leave me alone in Greek. So we walk up and I was like, what do you want? Shampoo, shampoo. And I was like, yeah, like that was us. Like, what the heck do you want? Like, leave us alone. So then he was like in the road. So cars started beeping that he needed to go. So like he had to move and then he drove away and we went back down to the restaurant and we like gave them the license plate and all the information and everything and they're like oh like i think that we know who that is so kind of backstory the one thing that my mom was the most terrified about me going abroad was the movie taken so if you guys have seen the movie taken basically it's um this girl and she goes to paris with her friend and they were gonna go travel around Europe basically to follow um, a band and she ends up getting kidnapped. The dad has to basically go, he's like a secret agent or something like that. And he goes and he like tries to find them and everything. So I was already terrified. Like that was my mom's biggest fear <laughs> was basically this whole situation. I'm pretty sure that's why she was so freaked out too. We were telling them the information. They were like, oh yeah, like I think we know who that is. He's not even from here. Yeah, like he's Albanian. And at that point, I thought I was gonna throw up and like Andriana didn't know anything that I was thinking at that point. So we get back to Florence and I was like, oh, like never been so relieved to be home. I was like, hey, like I need to tell you something. She's like, okay. And I was like, yeah, so like, you know that whole incident that happened? She's like, yeah, obviously. And I was like, yeah, so you know how um, they said that he was Albanian? She's like, yeah, and I was like, yep. Well, in the movie Taken, and this is literally nothing against, like, anyone. If, like, anyone's wa watching this and they're Albanian or, like, Greek or anything, like, I'm not, disclaimer, like, I don't care about, like, anything of that. Like, I'm just saying, like, just based on the movie and kind of, like, how this all happened, um, that's just kind of, like, what I'm explaining. Like, yeah, and I was like, yeah, so in the movie Taken, those guys were Albanian. She literally was like, <laughs> something that I can talk about if I make a um, study abroad video. Be very aware. I mean, this can just happen. This is anywhere. Be very aware of your surroundings. Pay attention to what's around you, who's around you. Don't have your face in your phone walking anywhere. Just be very observant of everything. Obviously, don't be freaked out walking everywhere, but pay attention. Pay attention to what's around you because you might not know if someone's following you or just don't trust people and just be smart is all I can say. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is super, super long. So I'm going to have to try to cut it down a little bit. And if you guys watch this whole thing, like I love you and I hope you enjoyed this. Leave me any comments of things you want to see. Um, I definitely want to film a study abroad video because I want to talk about my experience and tell you guys how 
amazing it was and just like tips and things about that um so if you guys want to see that definitely give this video a thumbs up i would love to make that for you guys that is about it i'm gonna wrap it up here and i will catch you guys in the next video love you bye